chatting constantly from the river to the sea. You know what from the river to the sea is? If you don't, that's all right. Most of the students chanting it don't understand that they are chanting genocidal uh, comments. All right, joining us now. They, they want to wipe out all Jews. Is this new to you, pal? If it is, where the hell have you been? They call the show Morning Joe, and I guess they mean Joe Scarborough, who used to be a Republican, believe it or not. But then he moved to New York. He got a job on MSNBC. He fell in love with a blonde babe. Let's just go with it. Who comes from a long line of Democrats. And suddenly, well, Joe sings a different tune. Now, they know very well that these protests are harming the Democratic Party. They know very well that the last poll shows an overwhelming, and I mean overwhelming majority of Americans are on the side of Israel. They hate these protesters. They hate what they stand for. In fact, a majority of Americans right now want Israel to finish the job. And we know what that means in rooting out Hamas from Gaza. So what's Morning Joe going to do? Well, they're going to whine. They're going to complain. And they're going to say, but January 6th. Richard, to your point, I think that's where we've all, that's the place we've all been sitting in watching this, going, what what the hell is going on? What are these universities doing? Why aren't they doing something? And I'll echo the horror um, uh, that this does look like January 6th. What a terrible example for our students. Um, at the same time, these are young adults. And the question is, why do you choose to learn about the complexities of other situations around the world. But this one, you want to set up an encampment. This one, you want to scare people. This one, you want to come to the edge of violence or even go to violence. Not, not the this edge. one, They're you risk your future and your education for. See, I think these college students obviously are missing the part where they need to see what's going on across the country with these protests. That it's now in the realm of violence. It's in the realm of hatred, whether some are peaceful or not. They need to watch the news and look at all the different arguments and be adults or start learning to be adults and set up discussions and debates across college campuses or their colleges or universities are going to have no choice but to expel them and ruin their future, the impact they want to have on the community, society, and the world at some point. But let's then go to the hard part of this. What is the solution for college university uh, presidents and deans who want to maintain control but also preserve free speech? Uh, what a fascinating uh, juxtaposition of ideas that you just heard from the brilliant mind of Mika Brzezinski. And by the way, the answer to that rhetorical question, which he thinks doesn't have an answer to it, which is what are college presidents supposed to do? We'll give you that answer a little later in the program, because if if you're in a red state, the answer is pretty simple. You, you know, follow the law. But did you notice in that entire monologue there about how bad these protests were? Not once was the actual issue raised or any concern raised about the broken moral compass of these dirtbags who are setting up illegal encampments, screaming anti-Semitic, you know, death to Israel, death to the Jews chants. Not once did they say they're on the wrong side of this issue. Not once did they say they're siding with terrorists who just killed 1,200 innocent people seven months ago and who continue to hold a couple hundred innocent people as hostage and sex slaves. Not once there. No, the concern is the future for these poor college students if they get expelled. And what's really underlying all of this discussion you're about to see is this is hurting us in the election. They're not actually against the sentiment of these dirtbags who were supporting, propping up, elevating, and running defense for terrorists. No, they're just worried that it's going to hurt them in November. Watch, there's more. Look, it's it's part of Columbia's <clears throat> storied history to allow people to go in and peacefully. illegally to break peacefully. into buildings. To protest Oh, oh no, 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 no. They're proud of illegally breaking into Jeff, buildings and taking over fortresses. president's offices in the 1960s. And you would think... If that hung over them for 50 years, they they would have been better prepared than than. Look, it's, it's yeah, and that's exactly what's happening here. You see, in the media, you've got these old boomers and Gen Xers, dinosaurs, 
who, uh, and I'm a Gen Xer, but I was a Reagan Gen Xer, not some of these other loony Britons who thought Reagan was the problem. They are trying to bring back the band together. They want to get the whole band together and say, oh, this is great. This is just like 1968, baby. We got our campus protests. We're protesting Vietnam and, and the civil rights movement. And this is righteous. And I'm, I'm hip. I'm down with the young kids right in their 60s and 70s. Oh, just like I was when I was getting. Yeah, what happened in 1968 again? Oh, that's right. One of the most unpopular men in American politics, Richard Nixon, won in a near landslide election because the American people saw exactly what was going on on these campuses and said, I don't know what side everyone else is on, but I ain't on the side of the people who are breaking the law. I'm not on the side of the dirtbags who need a bath. But that's exactly what's happening with the Democrats right now. And Joe Scarborough, who's actually pointing this out, saying, guys, guys, this is a problem. Again, this is all about the election in November. It has nothing to do with the principles. It has nothing to do with the values. Here they were. Just a few days. Also, by the way, don't you love there where Mika had to, like, talk Joe off the ledge? Well, they're mostly peaceful. What do you mean mostly peaceful? They're breaking into buildings. They're taking over offices. And this is just what these hippie dirtbags did back in the 60s. So a couple of days ago, they sort of started to see the warning signs. They got to watch them again. Talking about the growing protest. This is Joe and Mika, the canary in the coal mine, showing everybody this is going to be a problem for us. If we want to win, we got to stop Trump at all costs. You're not helping. You've got to send funding to Ukraine because they're fighting for us. When you read about what is happening to Ukrainian soldiers captured by Russians and then putting, if they're if they're brought home in a prisoner swap, they're put back out there three months later because that's all they got. Just devastating. Are you kidding me? I don't hear anything about that no, because nothing. that's doesn't it doesn't involve Jews. For the safety of the world. It doesn't involve Jews. It doesn't involve Israel. Because if this were about Arabs dying, if this is about Palestinians dying, they would have shut down campuses when Assad was killing <sighs> five hundred thousand Arabs. But not a word. Colleges are places for education, for deeper understanding, yeah. for understanding these different uh, problems around the world and for debate, for empathy, for mm-hmm. learning, yeah. for hearing each other. Well, and, and, and by the way, uh, Jonathan, I'm going to pause there. We're going we're gonna to get to more, but I just want to say, by the way, for those of you who don't know, you know, Mika Brzezinski's dad used to be in the Carter administration and, and helped engineer the peace accords between Egypt and uh, and Israel. It was the first major peace accord between an, uh, a, a Middle Eastern, predominantly Muslim nation and the country of Israel. It, it was a huge deal. The Camp David Accords, look it up. Mika's dad was part of that, okay? So they know better. They understand exactly what's going on here. But do you notice at the beginning there, we, why don't we see this for Ukraine? Don't you know what's happening in Ukraine? Honey, because this is about Jew hatred. This is about anti-Semitism. That's why Ukraine, they're in Europe. We can't, we can't care about them on a college campus. And, and this whole idea, college campuses are supposed to be about free and open debate and exploring ideas and embracing each other's differences and learning and trying to get together. Where the hell have you been, Blondie? I've got more to say about this because I don't want to get in the way of Morning Joe, but just so you know, you know, there's been a co- problem on college campuses well before three weeks ago when these encampments set up. And sadly, and I'm on the side of the poor Jewish students who can't even make it to class or, or walk across campus solely because of, of their religion and because of their of their genetic makeup. It's disgusting. It's despicable. But let me be clear. Those same Jewish students are being oppressed right now who were seeing the hate on campus from the pro-Hamas protesters. Well, they were around when Ben Shapiro and Matt Walsh and Ann Coulter and Larry O'Connor couldn't speak on their campus. We couldn't even show up and give a speech in a nice civilized auditorium. They saw what was happening on the college. Did they say anything then? But frankly, for all I know, they may have been part of the protests against conservative speakers. I mean, part of the theme of today's show is you're reaping what you sow, guys, including these two. 
These protesters, these, these people who are pro-Hamas, who are making encampments on college campuses right now, they've been emboldened and enabled by these guys. Who do you think watches MSNBC? All right, we'll go back to the mirror. We'll let you take it from here. But, uh, you know, you, you take an issue. I can't think of an issue that requires more discussion, that requires more patience, that requires a greater understanding that two truths can can be held at the same time. If these students actually had been taught over their lifetimes to actually engage in critical thinking. Because as we've done on this show, we have talked about. You know, I just, I, again, I love the revelation from our, our pal Joe Scarborough that what are they learning? It's like, thank you. We've been there. It's only when it hits them in the face that they realize none of these people have learned critical thinking. None of these people know what the hell they're talking about. And by the way, it's not just ecologists. This is our whole point. This is why we're angry at critical race theory as the driving force of the curriculum in public schools. The transgender issues and diversity, equity, and inclusion is the driving force behind curriculum instead of, you know, reading, writing, and arithmetic. Joe, you're just now realizing that they haven't been taught critical thinking and they're just going with the mob like lemmings because it's the cool thing to do. Hey, Joe, four years ago, these exact same kids were protesting Trump and you loved them. These exact same kids were keeping any student who wears a MAGA hat from attending their class on campus, who said that 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 language is violence, that words are hurting me. These are your pals, Joe. You loved them when they were on your side, and now you're suddenly realizing the monster you've created. There's more. Again, a few days ago, this is them figuring it out. It's finally starting to figure out. But again, ultimately, their problem is not the education problem. Their problem is not the kids. Their problem is not Israel. Their problem is all of this is adding up to crushing landslide defeat in November. And they're just now, and it's amazing to watch them reach the realization. Because this is stuff we've known. Watch. To NBC News in 1968 about ongoing protests at the school in opposition to the Vietnam War. I've got to say, it makes as much sense in 2024 having 18 or 19-year-old people running college campuses as it did in 1968, which is to say, doesn't make any sense at all. And you do wonder where the adults are, the adults that are supposed to be running the university, the amount of money that they are paid to educate students and they can't allow students to go to class because a small subset of those students and outside agitators want to shut down the camp. Where are the adults? It's staggering. Not just to me. I know I'm a conservative. Not just to me, but to 90 percent of Americans. They want to know where the adults are at Columbia. They want to know where the adults are at Penn. They want to know where the adults are at Harvard. They want to know where the adults are at all of these college campuses where they're letting their students and outside agitators run across the campus, shut down debate, scream whenever anybody tries to talk reason to them, Um shout genocidal chants, hold up signs pointing to Jews saying Hamas's next victims, holding up signs talking about the final solution, chanting constantly from the river to the sea. You know from the river to the sea is? If you don't, that's all right. Most of the students chanting it don't understand that they are chanting genocidal uh, comments. All right, joining us now. They, they want to wipe out all Jews and they they want to destroy the state of Israel and they want to kill Jews and push them. See, they are Hamas on college campuses when they chant that. Some of them may not even know what they're doing. Yeah, exactly. That's the point. Uh, but, but the adults there do. Yes, they do. And yet this, by the way, this is a long time coming. This has been coming since the 1960s. And now the people that were burning down college campuses, the people that were taking over president's offices, those people are now on the faculty senate 
uh, in the faculty senate trying to encourage these students to do the same. They helped elect it. And they helped elect Nixon. They, 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 I guess they want to elect Donald Trump in 24. Good on you, guys. Okay, joining Good us now, you. staff writer at the Atlantic, George Packer. All right, there you go. <laughs> I think, honestly, maybe my favorite part of that is Joe Scarborough calling himself a conservative, <laughs> by the way. Did you, did you like how Mika, like every time she tried to chime in there, she was, you know, know your place, Mika. Don't interrupt the big man. Where are the adults? I did, my question for you is, do you think Joe has just come to this realization now that the people who are running the universities right now are the same people who were burning down campuses in 1968? Is this new to you, pal? If it is, where the hell have you been? Where are the adults? I've got news for you, Joe. The guy who lives in the house right behind you there? Oh, that's right. I forgot. They're in their garage in Tampa. That's just a painting to fool everybody that they're in Washington. Pet peeve of mine. The guy who lives in that house, not only is he the adult who's on the same side as the protesters you're now decrying, but he wants to pay off all their student loans with your money. That's right. That's the best part of it. Joe Scarborough just went through four minutes of a monologue telling you everything that's wrong with college campuses and universities and how they're running all the money they've got, yet at the same time celebrates that the guy who lives in that house wants to take money from hardworking Americans, some who don't even have college educations, or some who actually did the hard work and made sacrifices to pay for their own kids' college educations, let alone their own college education, wants to take their money and pay off the student loans of the very people who are burning down the campus today, screaming death to the Jews. And Joe has not quite put those numbers together yet. He's starting to put the pieces together a little bit, but he hasn't quite finished the picture. Did you hear the whole thing about they're saying from the river to the sea? Do you know what that means? They might not know what that means, but the adults do. Yes, the adults know what it means, and they agree. That's the point. Do they know what that means from the river to the sea? It almost sounds like Joe has been watching our show for the last few months. Maybe. But you heard the final sentiment there, the final most important part of this. You're going to get Donald Trump elected. That's why they're passionate. That's why they're angry. It has nothing to do with Israel. It has nothing to do with right or wrong. It has nothing to do with the fact that the Hamas, the people that these protesters are supporting and elevating and celebrating and singing songs to, murdered 1,200 innocent people and still continue to hold 200 uh, slaves, prisoners, has nothing to do with it. He revealed it all right at the end. You're going to get Donald Trump elected. That said... One one last moment from MSNBC here, because there is hope. There is hope because we, the people, still have a voice. We don't have to worry about the media reporting things that we need them to report. No, we go over their heads. We go under between their legs, so to speak. We've got direct-to-you streaming content like you're watching right now, and we still have our voices. And I want you to see how our voices are being heard, even on MSNBC, as Ken Delanian, Reports outside the Supreme Court. Is it about the immunity arguments that happen in the Supreme Court? Watch what happens when one of us, one of the people, one of the real Americans has their chance. And by not taking it on an expedited basis, sort of taking it under regular order yeah, here, man, they've man. already created an, a significant delay here that means that this election case, however they rule, uh, c- can't go to trial probably before the fall. And now we come Yo, to exactly man, what they're man, considering here. Up? which is the question of whether a president has absolute no, immunity. Uh, and then the, there's a second no, question here, which is whether news. anything that Donald Trump is accused of Wait, would actually constitute news. a president, a presidential act Yo, uh, implicated so, in the immunity Ken? question. Be- yeah. Yo, Just making sure you're OK. Do you need is everything OK? Yo, we hear someone yelling. Yeah, it's, it's fine. We have a heckler here. Outside well, yes, okay. yeah, you know, I, I, I've got to say they obviously have been following the David Packer testimony. They're yelling fake news and they obviously want viewers to know that Donald Trump you're- lied about uh, JFK's assassination, tried to blame uh, blame Ted Cruz. Uh, he's yelling fake news also because Donald Trump lied along with David Packer. Uh, they worked together to lie about Ben Carson, to lie about Hillary Clinton. Fake news all around. So I want to thank him for actually uh, framing it, framing it, sure you- fr- framing it for us. We want to make sure you're OK, but yeah. also we want everybody watching to know. 
that that person screaming fake news, obviously talking about all the lies that Donald Trump perpetrated about Hillary Clinton and all of his opponents in 2020. Go. Yeah, I got to give it context and frame that. You know, usually you're supposed to ignore a heckler. I love that they that are you going to be OK? Is it an insurrectionist? Say like, like they don't have security at these standups in front of the Supreme Court. Also, don't we love it when Mika's wearing her house coat? Which it's a little chilly there in the garage in Florida. So she had to put on the house coat. Joe, Joe's in an actual jacket and tie, you know, uh, the swimming trunks underneath. Because, again, they're in Florida in their garage. They're not in Washington, D.C. And Mika, a little chilly. So she put on the house coat. And, boy, that's quite a ring that she's got. I love those two so much. Fake news, fake news. Well, clearly that person is talking about how the National Enquirer and Donald Trump lied about Ted Cruz. Hey, Joe, I hate to break it to you. That is Ted Cruz. He He's okay with what Donald Trump said about him because he's got higher concerns right now about the future of our nation. If Ted Cruz is okay with the whole thing, how come Joe isn't? That, would, that was literally Ted Cruz standing there on the street yelling fake news at MSNBC. All right, maybe not. But it could have been.